Hello and welcome once again to The Blueprints. This is Canada's Conservative Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Schmale, Member of Parliament for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock. New content for you every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time on today's show, The Sad State, that is the Department of Veterans Affairs. To talk about that and much, much more, we have Blake Richards, a Member of Parliament for Banff Airdrie, also the critic for Veterans Affairs. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jamie. Yeah, we're going to be putting out some pretty uh, interesting content here today that uh, may touch on some heartstrings of many. Um, so uh, let's get right to it because I think probably the most important relationship, one of them that the government at least should have, would be with our veterans. And unfortunately, as you're pointing out in committee, a lot of the hard work you're doing is exposing the Liberals for doing, unfortunately, the exact opposite. Yeah, that, that sadly is true, Jamie. Um, it's... Uh it's heartbreaking, you know, every single day in this job I hear from veterans who, you know, fought for this country, they served this country and, you know, they, they're just looking for a little bit of, of help to deal with physical injuries, mental injuries that might have suffered as a result of their service and they just can't get it. Uh, veterans often talk about this, what they call a triple D policy, you know, deny, delay, die. And they say that uh, Veterans Affairs acts like a insurance company yeah. where they're just trying to find a way to uh, deny the claim they're trying to find a way to delay it um, and um, you know I think veterans if there's one group of people in this country who've who've earned the right to uh, to be treated a little better than what they are I think our veterans have got to be the very top of the list and uh, it's shameful to, to, to see how they're being treated. Even I'm hearing it in, in my writing outside of what's appearing for a committee that you, you're dealing with on kind of a, the larger scale, but even at my local level, I've, I've heard that even when I first started, that it was more about when, when a veteran submits a claim or tries to advocate for himself or herself, the, they, they automatically assume there's going to be a no. It's, yeah. it, it's just assumed it's a no and they're going to have to go through the yeah. appeal process. Yeah, it, it, it really feels a lot at a time like what, and, and this is certainly the impression that veterans have, and I don't think they're wrong, um, is, you know, that you put in a claim, and it's, it's, you know, a medical condition that you suffered. I mean, we hear stories all the time of someone who, uh, while they were in the Canadian Armed Forces, uh, diagnosed with, with an injury of some kind, uh, and then they, they later when they leave the forces, they go to Veterans Affairs for help with that very same condition, mm -hmm. and Veterans Affairs says, well, prove it to us. Yes. They were diagnosed while they were in the Canadian Armed Forces, and then Veterans Affairs wants them to reprove that. And even if they prove it once, they've got to prove it again the next time they need something, and next year because they have to show that it's still a condition. And what, what that does is it leaves veterans to a point where they... They feel like giving up. Yeah, that's a lot of instead stress. Of, instead of just pursuing what they're what they're what they're deserved, uh, and they and they will they'll give up because it's just it's just too difficult to go through that process, or it's too much to have to tell the story of how they were injured over and over again. I mean, sometimes these were pretty traumatic incidents, yeah. incidents, right? And and to have to tell that story again and again and again just to get the help that they're entitled to, uh, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. Well, there's that story, I don't know how many months ago, maybe it was a year ago, could have been, I, I lose track of time sometimes, about that, the uh, numerous veterans saying they yeah. called for help. One in particular that kind of started the headlines and, yeah. and the awareness of this was, uh, I believe, a, a female yeah. uh, soldier, a female veteran, who needed a wheelchair lift because of injuries Correct. suffered Correct. during her time in the forces. And the, the person on the other end at Veterans Affairs Canada uh, didn't even bother to say, hey, how can we get you some help? It was, have you considered dying? Have you yeah. considered about medical yeah. assistance and dying? 100%. You know, this is, I mean, I can tell numerous stories, but the one you mentioned, Christine Goche is her name. Um, you know, she's in a wheelchair as a result of an injury, back injury that she suffered during service. And uh, in order to get in and out of her home, um, she, she needs a wheelchair lift. Mm -hmm. uh, and... She's been fighting with Veterans Affairs for years to get that lift that she needs. And uh, in, the, in the meantime, what she's had to do, every time she wants to leave her house, whether she has to go get groceries or whatever the case might be, she has to drag herself up and down a flight of stairs and across a gravel driveway because she has no way to get her wheelchair up and down these stairs. That's awful. And like, can you imagine that? You know, 
And that's what she has to do. And so all she was doing was looking for help to be able to live her life in a comfortable way. And Veterans Affairs said to her, well, you know what, if it's so hard to live, we could help you with dying. And she said, well, no. Yeah, I, I actually I, do want to live. I, I, I want, like life. I want <laughs> help yeah. with living my life, not with ending my life. But that is the approach. And, and you know, she's one of, unfortunately, several veterans who you know, had that same experience, you know. I remember the one guy telling me, you know, he he, um, he was trying to be reassessed because he needed uh, home care for uh, for the disability that he was dealing with, and um, he was he needed to be 100% disabled, and I think he was at 98% disabled. Oh my! So he was looking to be reassessed, mm -hmm. uh, and you know he had a successful business. He lost it because of the condition. He can't, you know, he just can't function enough 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 of the time, and and so he um, was looking for for that help. Uh, and they and the first question that they asked him when they reassessed him was um, was would you like maid? Well, he didn't understand what maid was. He didn't know he he thought that he they meant someone to clean his home. Oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah. and and so, anyways, as it came out, he discovered that what they were talking about was medical assistance and dying. And again, his response was, "I I want to live. I just need some help to to live my life. I don't need. I don't. I don't want to die." But, but when you have a situation where those who serve this country. And the government is telling them, you know what, if it's so hard. Yeah, yeah. And it's, why is it hard? Well, it's hard because the government's made it difficult yeah. because they won't give them the services they need. And then they say, you know, go, that we could help you end your life. That's, uh, there's, there's no words for there's that. There's no words for it. You think on the human level, on the compassionate side, like the person on the other end of the line would, would want to maybe help, maybe offer some alternatives or a pathway to get the approval. Right. But it's it's more like, I don't really, I don't have, you know, have, if you kill yourself, then that's one less file on my desk. That's how I'm reading this whole situation. It's, it's, it's sadly, disgusting. Sadly, that's how veterans see it too. I mean, that goes back to what I was talking about, that triple yeah. D policy, they deny, delay, die, right? If we deny you, we delay you, and it ultimately, you know, if if you if you end your life, well, it's one less veteran we have to deal with, and that's that's the approach that it, that they seem to be be seeing, and it's it's sad, and you know, it's um, doesn't have to be that way. I mean, this is such a simple solution in my mind. You know, these are people who served our country. If they've got injuries that, in particular, in many cases, a lot of these injuries are very common to service. You know, I'll give you one example. Uh, hearing loss, yes. tinnitus. Yeah. This is something that's a very common injury related to someone's service. Uh, and yet we're seeing hundreds, thousands of cases every year uh, going to the Veterans Review and Appeal Board. And that, that's a process that they've, they would have already gone through two years of probably um, appeals and, and various processes to get to that point. So now you've put the veteran through two years of this to just try to get maybe a hearing aid because they've got a little hearing loss. It's a common service related mm -hmm. injury. They get, they get to the Veterans Review and Appeal Board, and, and 94% of the cases, when they get to that point, are, are approved. So couldn't we have saved everybody all of that time, <laughs> yep. all of that effort, all that money, and all that aggravation that you're yep. causing our veterans and just approve them to begin with? Well, Seems like common sense you might to have me, to but shrink the bureaucracy if there's more yeses than nos. We uh, well, and and I suspect that's got something to do with it. But you know, common sense. We we need common sense back in this country, I agree. Jamie. Let's get to a couple of videos because we have some on queue here. Let's come, queue up cut one. It uh, focuses on some of the work you're doing in Parliament and the hard work uh, that you're doing for our veterans here in Canada, but also focuses on some of the some of the problems with the mindset of this Liberal government. So let's play cut one. The toll of war weighs heavily upon our veterans and so it is our duty to honour their sacred contribution and ensure they are cared for. Yet this Prime Minister has told them that they are asking for more than he can give. Why are we still uh, fighting against certain uh, veterans groups in court? Uh, because uh, they are asking for more than we are able to give right now. And after eight years, we are seeing veterans suffering in record numbers. The Veterans Food Bank in Calgary reports that the demand for their services has doubled and they expect their shelves to be empty by the end of the week. Veterans are suffering right now, with more and more using food banks and homeless shelters. That comment, they're asking more than what we're prepared to give. $54 million on a RIVE scam. $150 million in the Green Slush Fund. The list goes on and on and on but they don't have any extra money for our veterans. Yeah, yeah, isn't it sad? Isn't it sad? You know, we had, we had uh, recently the 
Veterans Affairs Minister came to our Veterans Affairs Committee and, uh, and was asking her about this very thing. And, um, you know, the, the response was just incredible to me. You know, like, well, we're, we're, we're trying to do better. We're, we're working on it. We, and, and I hear that every time a minister comes to of the course, committee. Of yeah. course, always They're always trying to do better. They're planning. They Maybe we got lots new, of new ideas. lots of graphs and charts. And Yeah, and they, they always say they're trying to do better. They always say they've got this new program that they announce and they never deliver on. They've always got new staff they're going to hire. They've, it's always some, mm-hmm. some, but it's never about the results that they're That's delivering right. for veterans. It's, that's the one thing that's always missing is what are the results for veterans? And, they, and that never changes. They, right. The results are never there. And it's just, it's just sad, you know, because, it, because it's, it, it's a very simple solution. If you, if, if you, where there's a will, there's a way, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to be there f- to, to support our veterans, you can be there. Yeah. You don't need all these other things. You just need to deliver on, on what they've been promised, which is if, if you go to, if you go to, to serve this country overseas or a, a, anywhere in the world, you suffer an injury, whether that be a physical injury, a mental injury, our duty mm-hmm. as a country That's is right. to take care of that yep. and make sure that, you're, that, that you've got the support you need. That's all that veterans expect, and I don't think it's anything they shouldn't expect. I uh, agree. And all we need to do is just deliver on that. Uh, you know, it's, I think it's pretty clear to everybody that, uh, that we have, you know, the the will is just lacking with this government. They don't they don't they don't value, or or appreciate this service that veterans have given this country. It's that simple, and I hate to say it. I really do hate to say it, Jamie, because it's it's sad to to think that that's the case, but it really is. And the only way we're going to get veterans what they deserve is 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 a is a new government that has some common sense. Well, let's queue up cut two. Let's see the Minister of Veterans Affairs in action at committee, kind of building on what your point earlier was. Uh, this again, we're we're touching on some hard strings in this in this program. Uh, some of this might be a little hard to watch, but uh, let's play cut two, and we'll talk about it in a second. Uh, I'm not saying that there is things that are broken in Veterans Affairs Canada. Uh, I'm not saying that there is things that are broken in Veterans Affairs Canada. L- let me say this: If VAC were a private company, would it survive? Yeah, no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't survive. It really would. It needs to first of all create value. It is so um, unproductive and inefficient, and um, its uh, customers are very unhappy. Uh, I'm not saying that there is things that are broken in Veterans Affairs Canada. In the veterans community, we have a joke that VAC operates under the following premise the three D's, deny, delay, and die. Deny, claim, delay the appeal, and hope the veteran dies or gives up fighting. I am 104% disabled, according to Veterans Affairs, and I cannot get help. Uh, I'm not saying that there's things that are broken in Veterans Affairs Canada. It took me almost 10 years to get uh, my pension sorted out. So there's a lot of frustration and futility that goes with uh, trying to navigate through Veterans Affairs. And eventually, the uh, it, it causes soldiers to lose hope and think about taking their lives. And it's the triple D policy, delay, deny, die. That's, yeah. that's unbelievable. I mean, you, you saw it over and over in that clip. Every veteran talked yeah. about the, the, the D, triple D policy, deny, delay, die. And they all spoke to it. And, you know, you listen to the last veteran there talk about 10 years to process a claim. Um, sadly, that's not that uncommon. Like, this isn't weeks. Mm-hmm. This is in months. This is measured in years, the town, amount of time that veterans are taking to navigate through these processes. I mean, many veterans are now finding they, they feel like they've got to go hire a lawyer just to navigate a process that's supposed to be there for them to get the help they need. Or, you know, I can give you another example of a veteran, um, you know, who's in a wheelchair. He's missing both legs. And every year, Veterans Affairs expects him to prove that he still needs a wheelchair. What do you have? I, I, like, did they think his legs were going to grow back? Yeah, that's... He, he, he lost his legs serving this country. Just help the Where's guy. Where's the common sense? Right? So it's just so frustrating. Um, and, you know, you, you hear, you hear uh, the minister saying, well, nothing's broken. Yeah. How can you say that? Right. When you have veteran after veteran after veteran getting up and saying, I can't get the help I, uh, I need. Um, it's, it's shameful. And then when you have them go serve... They're paying, they have in some cases, pay for their meals, fundraise, try to get better equipment. So they're not supported any step of the way. No, and not only only that, like, 
you know, we haven't even really talked about uh, the number of veterans that are using food banks. Yeah. You know, um, in in Edmonton, they just recently reported that that in the last three years, the the usage by veterans of the food bank of the veterans of food bank in Edmonton has quadrupled in the last three years. The numbers of veterans uh, that are homeless are, you know, in, in probably in record numbers mm-hmm. right now. And it, and it goes so bad that, you know, it speaks to the, what you just said about the serving members of the Canadian Armed Forces. We've got serving members of the Canadian Armed Forces who are living in their cars yeah. because they can't afford a place to live. I mean, that's how badly broken things are under this government. I mean, those things speak to inflation and the cost of living, which, mm-hmm. which you know, uh, everybody in Canada is, is suffering as a result of the actions of this government and, and what that's caused. But when you talk about people who are serving this country in uniform and they can't even afford a place to live, they're living in their cars, there's no excuse for that. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Blake, uh, unfortunately, we're running short on time. We, we uh, I wanted to touch on also the uh, the homeless issue that we're seeing and kind of dive in deeper on that. Um, well, the guests always get the final word. Maybe you want to touch on that or something else, but the floor is yours. Well, I think it really comes down to this, Jamie. I mean, these people served our country. Mm-hmm. They, um, they, were will- they were willing to lay their lives on the line for this country. They fought for the freedoms that we all enjoy. And I think every Canadian could look at, at that and say, we want to make sure they're, that they're taken care of, whether that be to make sure that they've got, uh, you know, the training they need to, to enter a private sector career following uh, their service, whether it be helping them deal with a mental or physical injury that, they've got, that they have as a result of their service. I think every Canadian would agree we want to see that happen. Um, so let's make it happen, right? Uh, and veterans shouldn't wait years to deal with the process. They shouldn't be so frustrated with the process that, that they just ha- feel like giving up. Yeah. They shouldn't be in a situation where they've got a government telling them, well, if it's so t- difficult, we could help you end, end your life. Like that kind of stuff, there is no excuse for. And uh, we've, we've, we simply have to do better by our veterans. Um, and, you know, frankly, uh, we, we need a new government. We need a, a common sense conservative government to come in uh, that will show our veterans the respect that they deserve. Blake, thank you very much for your time. Absolutely. really appreciate thank it. You, I know it was a hard topic, but you're doing a great job on that file. Uh, Blake Richards, Member of Parliament for Banff Airdrie. We appreciate his time, also the Veterans Critic. We appreciate yours as well. I guarantee you, although the topic was difficult, you're, you're not hearing in the mainstream media, so we ask that you like, comment, share, and subscribe to this program. We'll get this information to you. We ask then that you tell your friends. They can download it on platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. It's out there. All of this together helps to ensure that Pierre Polyev becomes the next Prime Minister. New content for you every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Until next week, remember, low taxes, less governments, more freedom. That's the Blueprints.